Hi, sugar time. This video might end up a little bit shorter than the others, but don't worry, it's packed with content like boats and, and sailing. And I think the next videos might be a little bit shorter, considering how long they take to edit and how often I want to put them out. I had no idea how long it takes to edit a video. Also, I just might be bad at it. But even a video that doesn't look like it's that much, like some of these, there's a lot to go into it. But never mind any of that, let's just get to the game. As you might recall from last time, we're going to the bat place to see if anybody needs this crown over here. Like maybe they'll return to normal if we give them a crown. This definitely seemed cursed the first time I came here. Don't mind me as I take the longest way around possible. Ooh, ha ha! You fools fell right into my trap. I am Astos, King of the Dark Elves. With the combined power of the crown you now hold and crystal eye I already possessed, I will become the true Elf King. It is useless to resist me. I can take what is mine by sheer force. Okay, I'm going to assume that I was supposed to run into him before, and I completely missed him. My guys are probably very confused right now. But it'll be okay. It's a good thing I assigned the elves some very threatening voices. So I think this is the second boss we run into. Garland being the first boss. Because the other things we ran into were monsters. I don't think we've run into another boss. But once we get past him, maybe we'll start opening some more stuff up. We might actually be kind of high level for this. I don't know what level you're supposed to be when we get here, but I was running around quite a bit. Anyway, I'm trying out some of these buffs. Although I didn't like how sleep worked before, I'm going to try some different things and see how they work. Yeah, I'm kind of low on spells right now. I guess I should have stocked up right before I came in. Well, maybe it didn't matter. We know who needs that, so we're on track to start getting things done. Guess we're gonna run over to Matoya. And then we should get a potion from Matoya, and then we'll 
help the prince. I'm not sure what after that. Wait, no, the prince had the key, right? So then we'll get that mystic key, and then we'll be running around opening everything. At least that's what I think is going to happen. Those doors were everywhere, so it'll probably take a little while to get all that done. But at least we're on a path, we're getting to the next thing, and then the next thing, and then we'll see what happens after that. So, current impressions of this game right now. I would say that I'm enjoying it so far. It's old school in a lot of ways that's very nostalgic. There's a little bit of a grind to it, but it's not too bad. When I started out, I thought it would be a lot slower and clunkier. But the gameplay is actually pretty decent. Even though you can see there's some differences from the later entries, it still runs pretty good. It's solid enough. As for the story, I'm hoping there will be some twists that I don't see coming. Like, I expected it to be simple, and hopefully there's a little bit of spice in there. I'm not really far enough yet to be able to say if that'll happen or not, because we're still at the beginning. I guess I sort of missed part of the story too, because I didn't go see that dark elf earlier. So I don't know what he was supposed to tell the Warriors of Light before I met him. We'll just have to make up our own version of what happened with Astos. I'm sure it'll be just as good as their original. We'll just have to think about it for a little bit. Oh, what's this? My crystal eye. Give it here! Don't worry. I have something to give you in exchange. Take this potion. It's the most amazing potion in my entire collection. Ah, I can see. I can see again. You're still here. I don't need you anymore, so be on your way. You're not as attractive as I thought you'd be. Oh my goodness, Matoya. She's a sassy witch. I told you she was the best character in the game. I guess she's just sitting in her cave hoping that a bunch of hot guys walk in. I can identify with her. I mean, who doesn't want that? Admittedly, it hasn't been a very good strategy for me so far. I'm probably going to have to modify my approach if I want to get some better results. Or any results. This jolt tonic may be just what we need to break the curse and awaken the prince. I will try it at once. Your Highness? Your Highness? I was having a terrible nightmare. Am I still dreaming? You, you're the legendary warriors. Something tells me I'm not dreaming. I shall heed the legend as it was told to me and my forefathers. The time for me to pass on the mystic key to its rightful owners has come at last. Thanks to you, the prince has finally awoken. You have my undying gratitude. You've brought peace back to Alfheim. I am awake and strong again, all because of you. Thank you, warriors of light. Okay, guys, I found the cutscene of what happens with uh, Astos, or when he's disguised as the king, when you're supposed to originally meet him. So I'll put that up right now while we're just fighting monsters so that you can see what was supposed to happen. Hey, Hunts, 
I see you've already built your own team and I thought you might be interested in an amazing opportunity. How would you like to earn more gold than you've ever made before? You can earn millions right at home with this once in a lifetime business. You see how young I look. Would you believe I'm 10,000 years old? It's true. And with our brand new supplement youth fountain, you can stay young forever too. And you can own your own youth business as a coach. All it takes is a diamond starter kit, which is on sale for a limited time only. It practically sells itself. You'll earn millions in no time. All you need is to bring me a crown and I can get you started right away. Let me know when you're ready for the first date in your brand new life. Oh wow guys, sorry about that. I didn't realize that was going to be so scary. This video might need a content warning on it. So it looks like the Warriors are light. Almost got caught up in a multi-level marketing scheme. But luckily, it just turned out to be the evil Dark Elf. And they didn't end up losing their life savings. You always have to be careful of these things, you know? You don't know where they're going to pop up at. They always seem to pop up in the most unusual places. If you don't know what the multi-level marketing is, it's basically a pyramid scheme except they sell a product. But the product is background noise. The main thing is recruiting people. You can easily look up a whole lot of channels that cover the multi-level marketing schemes that are out there. Although there's also some interesting drama going around on one of these channels. At least right now, by the time this video goes up, it might be, well, it probably will be old news. And of course, some people will watch this video much later on. So a while back, there was an issue with a YouTuber named Illuminati. And for people who don't know about it, or if it's been a while and you just forgot about it, basically, Illuminati used to make a lot of videos exposing companies for bad behavior, like MLMs and and companies with terrible work environments who abuse their employees, that sort of thing. But it turned out that she herself ran her company quite like that. Now, I don't know her, and I don't know the people involved. I, you know, that's their issue. It's not really my place to talk about it, or to try and get involved or act like I know everything. But I'm actually not surprised, and I stopped watching her videos a while before that, quite a while before that, and I can explain why. See, she would have a video about a company doing something horrible, and it would be sort of like, now this is made up of course, but it would be like if, if an employer set a bus of children on fire and said children are stupid, and her video about it would spend five minutes going off on how it's not okay to call children stupid, when uh, obviously something a little bit more drastic happened than that, that's a little bit more important. And so that's where it comes off as fake. It's like if you're walking with your friend and somebody comes up, calls your friend ugly, and then shoots them. Like a normal person would say, oh my god, you shot my friend. But somebody like this would say, I can't believe you called him ugly. And it's like somebody who has no morals, who is pretending to have morals. You know, no principles, no feelings or something. But they're trying to pretend that they do. But they're getting it wrong because they don't actually feel that way. And so any normal person would react to the big thing because that's the important thing. But somebody like this who's faking it doesn't know which one to properly react to. And so they come off as disingenuous because they are disingenuous. And so that's what really got me to stop watching her videos. Because she would be talking about a very serious subject. And then she would spend five minutes going off on some low, tiny, itty-bitty thing that doesn't matter in the scheme of things when you're talking about something when you're talking about some of the huge abuses these companies did, and she's talking about, like, oh, they they insulted somebody at some point, maybe. When this company would have done some horrible, horrible stuff, like maybe even life-threatening stuff, and she would be going off on a tangent and acting very melodramatic, 
about tiny little things. And you know, maybe on a normal day, let's say if I'm walking with a friend and somebody calls them ugly, it's like, okay, you know, that's rude. You don't have to be rude. But when you have something like they call them ugly and then they shoot them, normal people know one of those things is more important than the other. And you actually see a lot of this these days where people have very skewed priorities. And so they'll go off on the littlest things. And it's because they think anger is a virtue. You know, if they're the most outraged, then they're the most virtuous. But they are not. It's actually not a virtue. It's, it's not a good trait to be angry all the time. But the point for them is not what's actually happening. Because they're not legitimately upset about it. The point is that they're putting on an act to get other people to think that they're good people when they're not. And so that's why I stopped watching her a while back because I could see she was picking very unusual things to be upset about. You know, the forest was on fire and she was complaining about how somebody left a plastic bag behind in the forest. They can't tell which one is the priority. And I think that's a sign to look out for with people. If they're constantly prioritizing the wrong things, there's something wrong. Because normal people can tell which one of those things matters. Of course, another one is to watch out for if people are constant victims, and everything's always wrong in their life, and it's always everybody else's fault. You should watch out for that, too. They are the constant variable in all of those problems. But definitely watch out for people who don't understand basic things like this. And they put up a big front to make it look like they do. They want to look like the most virtuous. But if they're constantly off, there, there's something wrong. Just pay attention to that. And so it didn't surprise me at all when it came out that she's actually a very horrible person to everybody. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. I'm not trying to be too specific because somebody's a little bit so happy. I'm just trying to explain the type of pattern that I saw that drove me away from her content. In my opinion, allegedly. And some people might say she had writers that were writing what she was saying. And that's true. I don't know exactly what people wrote and what she might have put in. But there's definitely, when you listen to her, a condescending attitude in her tone a lot of these times. And she was going all in on the melodrama. So I don't think it's a case of her being a victim of writers. I think she was more than happy to preach at people. In my opinion, allegedly, don't take that as fact. As a matter of fact, we're talking about Minecraft, not even the real world. Seems like there's constantly one drama after another getting exposed with YouTubers. As soon as you find out one person does this horrible stuff, you know, they get forgotten and somebody else is being talked about who did some horrible things. And I guess that's true for most places. Like when you get into politics. And when you have so many people on a platform, it's probably just inevitable some of them are going to be awful. I mean, after Illuminati you had Colleen Ballinger talking inappropriately to children. And before that, you had, what, Chris Chan? Now, there's probably some stuff between Chris Chan and them, but, you know, it keeps coming and going. It's hard to remember each one. And all of those go into potentially criminal areas, so <laughs> they get pretty bad. Maybe I'll check out what some of the people here say after I've saved them, since I didn't check before. My sister's back, and it's thanks to you all. I could just kiss you! Mwah! Well, we weren't good enough for Matoya, but we were good enough for the princess. I don't know how I could ever thank you for rescuing Sarah. Money. Money is good. The... The Warriors of Light. I can't thank you enough for saving Lady Sarah.
The beautiful loot handed down for generations to the princesses of Cornelia is said to have a unique power. It can shatter the gateway of evil. Are you the Warriors of Light? The ones from Lucan's prophecy? Okay, so we finally heard something about the loot and what it does. And I think I'm right. I think it's going to come up at the end somehow. They use it to shatter the gateway, apparently. I don't think that'll come up for a while. It might be how we get to the bad guy if he runs to another dimension or something like that. And we know who needs that. I think it's time to go blow some stuff up. We're really making a lot of progress this time. So I think what we have left to find was the adamantite. We haven't found that. And the levy stone. We haven't found that. And so I think that's for a big fancy weapon and for the airship. Could be for armor, too. I don't remember if he said specifically. If we're lucky, maybe it'll be both. It does feel like there's a lot of stuff at the dwarf place compared to some of the others. Even when we first got there, suddenly there were hints about what to get and where to go all over the place. Are we supposed to get to these different mystic key doors at different times? Because I feel like we've gotten some of the same armor pieces for the same slots and multiple treasure chests. Like, haven't we gotten two or three swords for the warrior? Nitro powder. The explosive force in this powder would have Macanau open in no time flat. I owe ye, Bames. Here we go. Now we can blast this rock to smithereens. Why are you standing around for? That powder's set to blow. Unless you plan on going with it, you'd best get out while you still can. I can't wait to see what lies out there beyond that canal. Same for me. I think we've opened up the world map. Okay, so it's a magical sword. So maybe that's the endgame sword. Is Warrior the only one who gets one? The other guys are going to be feeling a little left out here. Just needed to get healed up before I headed out. I don't know how hard the monsters will get, or if it's going to be one of those things where there's special monsters in the ocean now. You know how some of them will have random encounters that are super hard that you could run into if you sail into a certain area. So I wanted to be prepared. Restore the crystals to grace. The vampire attacked, destroying our church and leaving our city in shambles. Is there nothing we can do to stop the ruination of the earth? If the earth crystal regains its glow, life will return to the earth. The hills and valleys will again be green. 
stop by my father's shop, okay? Now she's a hustler, I can appreciate that. I'm just a farmer. In the cave on the southern tip of this continent lives a man named Sada. He is a wise man who knows much. What is man name? I've come all the way from Duergati find Oot, the spring hide of the earth's decay. Long ago, a prosperous civilization thrived in the Northland. Now it's fallen into ruin. I've heard that the ancients possessed something with the power to make ships float in the sky. Restore the crystals to grace. Now, vampires don't feel very Final Fantasy-like to me. Um, I guess there's like Hawk Manor in Final Fantasy XIV. That has a very vampire kind of motif. I can't think of many other vampire instances in the Final Fantasy series. I'm trying to think of any others, but they're not coming to mind. I think the aesthetic of vampires reappears, but uh, not so much the actual vampires themselves. For example, uh, Vincent Valentine. He's got a very vampire-like look, but he's not a vampire, as far as we know. I think a lot of demons appear, which can have a kind of similar aesthetic. I do like that kind of look, like, I love Vincent Valentine's design. I think the gothic style can look very nice. I wouldn't necessarily want to live in a house or something styled like that, but I do like to look at them, and you know, it's great for Halloween. Just like I wouldn't necessarily want to dress like that, but I think it's a very nice look on some people. And it might be something I'd try for fun on certain days, like cosplaying or something like that. I do love cosplay. Comment if you love cosplaying. The giant living in the cave eats rocks. He'll eat just about any kind of rock, but I hear he especially likes gems. He can't get enough of them. The cavern of Earth is to the south of Melmond, on a peninsula called the Devil's Tail. It used to be the closer you got to that cave, the more fertile the soil. Now, now, it's a barren waste. The Earth is decaying, and it's all the doing of the vampire that lives in the cavern of Earth. Our town is in such rotten shape because he's blocking the flow of the power of Earth. Will you stop him for us? I have cosplayed a few times, but I haven't gotten that many opportunities. I would like to do it some more. I've been slowly piecing together a cosplay for one that I've wanted to do for a while. There is nothing I, the great genius Dr. Oon, do not know. What? You've never heard of me. Inconceivable. I hope we never run into him again and he's just some random named character in the middle of nowhere who thinks he's super important to the plot. But I've been to two conventions, I think. I've definitely been to one. I think I might have been to another one at some point. I'd like to get to some more someday. I don't see them pop up as much as they used to anymore. But I'm not really looking for them either right now just because I don't often have the money and time, but I'd love to go and get into the cosplay scene a little bit at some point. I really like props and cosplay and all that kind of stuff. I want to learn more about how to make them too. I think it's really neat when people learn how to make all their own gear. Some people do a really incredible job at it. But maybe in the future I'll be seeing some more anime conventions. 
I could be a little bit less of a shut-in. I used to be in an anime club when I was in college, but it's been quite a while. I don't really get out enough anymore. I've been trying to get myself out there a little bit more with things like this. You shall not pass. You heard him, guys. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go sailing and check out the world now that we're outside of the inner part there. And we'll have to turn on some sailing music for that. I asked what people's favorite anime were last time, and I don't have a specific favorite, but I figured I could say a few of the ones that I like. I haven't watched anything new for a while, so most of these will be a bit older. But I liked Escaflone. I thought the main character was pretty strong. She felt like she had her own hobbies, her own interests, her own thoughts. But I enjoyed the overall story. It's been a long time. I remember the plot kind of falls apart at the end. It gets a bit weird. But overall, I thought that was a really enjoyable one. I remember I actually took a long time collecting those special VHS tapes one at a time in those, <laughs> in those nice cases. And I don't even have anything that I can play them on anymore. And I think the my first one is a little bit ragged because I watched it so much. It did get dubbed later on, but I didn't really see much of anything of the dub. I like Pataliro. That's a very 80s one that most people probably haven't heard of. Basically, it's about the king of Malinera, who is a 10-year-old child, and his antics. And it's defies description. <laughs> if you can think of any plot in any anime or any story, it has probably done a parody of that story. It doesn't matter if you're talking about whether robots have sentience, or if you could take your teeth out of your skull to brush them. It doesn't matter. Any story you could think of, it's probably already done it. And then I enjoyed Death Note. I'm not sure if I watched the anime. I think I watched the first episode, but I think it follows the manga pretty closely from what I've heard. And I read the manga and I enjoyed that. I don't think I really need to describe what that one is. I, everybody should know that one, probably. And like a lot of people, I grew up on Dragon Ball Z. And I remember shows like Slayer's Next. I actually read the Slayer's Collector's Edition recently, the first one which has the first three light novels combined in it. And the light novels are a lot darker than the anime was. I do recommend them, it was interesting, and I want to read the next ones. But, for example, in the first light novel, introducing Lena, she comes across trolls which regenerate. And one of the first things she does to beat them, she uses a spell that reverses their regeneration. And so the trolls, when they get a little tiny scratch, literally come apart and become a whole bunch of intestines and guts and stuff lying on the floor of, I believe it was a tavern that they were in. Which is quite a bit different in tone than the anime was. I didn't mind it, I thought it was interesting. And I would recommend it seems like it's going to be a fun series. I was surprised that the author said he only planned a one-shot. Even in the first volume, to me it sounded like he was setting up more stuff, so that surprised me. But it's a kind of fun fantasy novel that I enjoyed. Fast-paced, light read, and definitely interesting to see how it is compared to the anime. Because I remember one episode of the anime that is in the stories where they basically do graffiti and stuff in the anime and the, <laughs> the story's much darker. <laughs> like the, all kinds of people are dying in the story. It's definitely still a comedy, but there's a bit of a tone shift.
Okay, this looks like it might be a good area to grind for experience and gill. So I'm going to stop in the town and see if there's much of anything going on in there. Talk to the people. And then I might stick around here for a bit and farm. But I'll do that off screen. There were some expensive items to save up for and I'll have to check here if there's really expensive stuff too. Feels like I'm getting a lot of item upgrades real fast all at once. I just got all that stuff from the mystic chests. I'm not sure if I even really used everything I got before upgrading it again. Well, he didn't have a whole lot to say. And it looks like the spells here are going to cost a bit, so I'll probably farm until I could buy a bunch of them, and then head back with enough gill to get that one piece of armor. That was like 36,000 gill, I think. It looks like it's a good thing I explored around a bit. The other places seemed to need an airship to get to because there weren't any ports to dock at them. So this looks like an area where you're supposed to farm and level up. And then I'll do the next part of the plot, and then I'll probably... I imagine I must be getting the airship soon, because I have to get that before I get to the other areas. So maybe with the rock golem guy who eats rocks, maybe that's where I find the levee stone. Maybe I float him out of the way with the levee stone. <laughs> My husband is always traveling, and in the little time he is home, he sleeps all day. I think he needs to get his priorities straight. Yeah, I think I met him. He seems to be pretty much the only other person in town, besides the shop owners. I like the detail of all the gravestones everywhere. It's telling you that a lot of people have died without just saying it. That is very good storytelling. It's letting you figure it out for yourself, just because you're seeing it all over the place. Instead of just walking up to a character and the character saying, Oh no, everybody died. The characters actually act like normal as if it's been this way for a while or it's been going this way for a while and it's just expected. So, I think we're going to end it around there since I'm just going to be grinding for a while. And then when I come back, we'll be over at the Earth Cavern place. So, have you ever read the light novels for any anime you watched? And was it any different than the anime? And if so, how was it different? Because a lot of anime and even manga come from light novels. But I think not too many people read the light novels yet. They're getting more popular. So maybe, in time, people will have read them. But have you read any that are like Slayers, where it was much different? There's a lot the same where I could recognize what episodes the chapters were supposed to be of. And at the same time, there was a lot different. So if you have, put it down below. And... With that, well, um, I guess that's about it for today. The next video will probably be a bit shorter. And we're done. Bye.